Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, it flies, air car demonstrates basic flight capabilities. Also, Blue Angels conduct final flight on Legacy Hornets. The EAA is mourning after the passing of Audrey Poborezny. Thank you for joining us this Friday. We hope you had a great week. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have an exciting episode today filled with the latest news. So let's start with just when you thought the flying car game was about as full as it could possibly get. Well, another candidate pops up. Aircar version 5 is the latest generation flying car that transforms from road vehicle into air vehicle in less than three minutes. The fifth generation flying car designed by Professor Stefan Klein completed two 1,500 feet AGL flights at Pestoni Airport in Slovakia this week. The model safety achieved two full airport patterns, including two takeoffs and landing. The two-seat model weighs about 1,100 kilograms and can carry an additional load of 200 kilograms per flight. Powered by a BMW 1.6 liter engine, the car plane has an effective power output of 140 horsepower. Estimated travel range for air car is about 1,000 clicks and flight consumption is 18 liters per hour. Aircar claims a takeoff of less than 1,000 feet and reaching speeds up to 120 miles per hour. Professor Stefan Klein, Klein Vision CTO and test pilot said in a statement, the key flight parameters confirm all theoretical concepts and calculations that the development of the air car was based on. Following the completion of all required flight tests in compliance with EASA regulations, we will deliver a model of a certified ADEPT 300 horsepower engine within the next six months. Coming up, we have new details on the NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission right after the break. I believe that if people use the landing doctor training program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. MeLT is just another tick on your pre-flight checklist until you need it. Did you ever wonder what would happen if you had an engine failure over the mountains, marshland, or other dangerous terrain? Take to the skies confidently with the most reliable and highest performing ELTs and safety products on board that instantly mobilized life-saving search and rescue across the world. Read survivor stories from aviators and adventurers who survived life-threatening encounters thanks to ACR and Artex life-saving technology. Luck favors the prepared at SurvivorClub.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some of the most interesting stories you don't want to miss in the segment we call Around the Patch. Finally, NASA's OSIRIS-REx stow sample of asteroid. NASA's Origins Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification Security Regolith Explorer, otherwise known as OSIRIS-REx, mission has successfully stowed the spacecraft's sample return capsule and its abundant sample of asteroid Bennu. On Wednesday, October 28th, the mission team sent out command to the spacecraft, instructing it to close that capsule, marking the end of one of the most challenging phases of the mission. The mission team spent two days working around the clock to carry out the stowage procedure. DOT announces drone pilot program. Sec Trans Chow has announced that the three-year UAS integration pilot program successfully concluded on October 25th Eight of the nine state, local, and tribal governments that participated in the program have signed new agreements with the FAA to continue to tackle remaining UAS integration challenges. The three years of information gathered under the Drone Integration Pilot Program will be applied to a new initiative called BEYOND, which will further advance the safe integration of drones into our national airspace, said the Secretary. 
ITPS to participate in KAI FA50 demo and promotion. ITPS Canada Lieutenant has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Korean Aerospace Industries to promote the KAI FA50 for tactical and adversary training. ITPS International Tactical Training Center is the only commercial entity providing advanced pilot training, including fighter weapons instruction courses, advanced tactics course, and mission commander courses to international customers. ITTC is currently providing fighter lead in training to the Royal Malaysian Air Force in London, Ontario. Arcadia Municipal Airport named Florida GA Airport of the Year. The Florida Department of Aviation has selected Arcadia Municipal Airport as its 2020 Airport of the Year, which was up against some stiff competition. Every year, the FDOT Aviation Office considers airports for the award of General Aviation Airport of the Year. Eligible airports for this award must be designated as a public-use general aviation airport by FDOT and must be geographically located within the state of Florida as part of the Florida Aviation System Plan. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. After 30 years, Blue Angels conduct final flight on Legacy Hornets. The Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, conducted a final flight of the FA-18 versions A, B, C, and D Legacy Hornets on November 4th. The final flight of the Legacy Hornets signifies the official transition of the Blue Angels to the FA-18 EF Super Hornet platform. We are incredibly honored to have the opportunity to salute those teams who have flown, maintained, and supported this platform for over three decades of service. U.S. Navy Blue Angels Commanding Officer and Flight Leader goes on to say, we deeply appreciate the expertise and operational knowledge Blue Angels past and present have brought to the team. And we look forward to enhancing our operations as we fully transition to flying the Super Hornet. The 2020 show marked the end of the service life of the aircraft the team has flown for 34 years. The 2021 show season will be the Blue Angels' first year flying the Super Hornet platform as well as the 75th anniversary of the team. Since 1946, Blue Angels have performed for more than 500 million fans. After these messages, EAA says goodbye to a longtime friend. We've been using Swift Fuels for five years. We use it on two different Rotax powered aircraft. Swift Fuel gives us the power we need, the reliability we need. We've also found that it has a very long shelf life. It runs clean. We don't have to scrub gunk out of our oil tank. It makes a huge difference compared to 100 low lead. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. The EAA is mourning after the passing of Audrey Poporezny. In remembering Paul Poporezny, one cannot have a complete memory of that great friend and soul without including his wife, Audrey, often close at hand. Audrey passed away in Oshkosh on Sunday, November 1st, at the age of 95. Jack Pelton, Experimental Aircraft Association CEO and Chairman of the Board, offered a statement on the death of Audrey, wife of the EAA's late founder, Paul Poporensny. The quiet power behind the leader of EAA's information and development was certainly Audrey. She supported Paul from the very earliest days of EAA, from being the sounding board for ideas and balancing the books to answering the phone and typing out membership cards. Audrey did whatever needed to be done, but never sought the spotlight for herself. 
Her understanding of people was also a gift that helped the EAA grow and thrive into a unique place of aviation, and her warmth will be remembered by all who knew her. She was indeed EAA's first lady. He goes on to say, our deepest condolences to her children, Tom and Bonnie, and to the entire family. Our best remembrance is to live up to the highest standards and inviting culture that Paul and Audrey began with EAA nearly 70 years ago. That does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. As always, please subscribe to YouTube and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, on Twitter. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently operating on our winter schedule, which means that we're streamed Monday and Friday with Airborne Unmanned and Airborne Flight Training alternating each Wednesday. We hope you had a great week. We'll see you next time.